Hi everyone, welcome back to yet again another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can set up a DHCP server and also how to set up the policies in Windows Server 2008. Okay, well, I am continuing this video from my last video, which was on roaming profiles, home folders, etc. etc. So, in case you miss it, the first thing you might want to do is to isolate your virtual environment away from your host my host computer so basically what you do is right click network adapters and just usually here we'll write NAT which stands for NAT and you just click it and go on internal network OK and you do the same thing for your um, Vista machine I already done this so I will not go through it again okay so to set up a DHCP server now first you probably want to set up a static IP address for your server and I've done this already. If you want to know how to do this, you can probably refer back to one of my older videos. By the way, you go to Server Manager, click on Rules, and then you can add a role. Next, as you see here, as you can see here, DHCP server. Next, next, it automatically selects the IP address for us. This is the IP address of the server right here. So you just continue clicking Next. And again, it automatically detects the um, parent domain, which is testlab.com, and the DNS server, which is um, hosted on 192.168.1.1, which is my server IP address. And when you click on validate, you'll see, you'll see that it's valid here. And let's click on next. And you can just ignore this. Okay, now you want to add a DHCP scope. So you click on add, and let's call this anything you want. Um, I'll just call it DHCP 192.168.1.0. And then you start an IP address. Hmm. Well, I'll just for demonstration purposes, I'll set as 192.168.1.100. Okay, the starting IP address will be the first IP address that will be leased by the DHCP server. And well, obviously, the ending IP address will be the last IP address that will be leased by the server. And I'll set this as dot two hundred. Subnet, subnet mass will be 255, sorry, 255.255.255.0 and the default gateway I'll put it as the um, IP of my server which is 192.168.1.1 and here you can select how long you want to lease this IP for um, 6 days will be fine, I mean this is just a demonstration so ok, I'll click on next I will disable DHCP v6 because um, we won't be using um, IPv6 so we just disable that Click on next. Okay, and in order to authorize the um, DHCP server in ADDS, you will need to sign in. And in this case, I'll sign in as the administrator account for my domain. I click on next. And install. Okay, our DHCP server has been successfully installed. So I just close this off. Okay, now it's actually going on a client machine now. So it'll go on our Vista box. Okay, as you can see, I'm already logged in in my um, client machine. And so what we want to do here is to actually set this machine so that it will accept IPs automatically. So we'll right click here, Network and Sharing Center, Manage Network Connections, right click on your adapter, Properties, um, you'll need admin privileges in order to do this, IPv4 Properties, uh, what you want to do is click on Obtain an IP address automatically, same thing for Obtain DNS Server address automatically. Click on OK, close, and what it's going to do is going to send a DHCP broadcast you know, to the um, network. They're going to say, "Hello, um, I'm looking for an IP address." And what our DHCP server will do is, well, okay, I can give you this IP address. Let's say um, the IP will be 192.168.1. whatever, whatever, and the default gateway will be XYZ and etc. etc. So what the client is going to do is it's probably going to accept the offer made by the DHCP server. So as you can see here, um, it's probably has already leased a um, IP. So going back to our server, um, we click on this. Okay, we might want to close this because um, it didn't refresh properly. So again, DHCP server, IPv4. And any leases, as you can see, um, the 192.168.1.100 has been leased to our Windows Vista machine. And if you go to our DNS server,
And sure enough, our Windows Vista PC is 192.168.1.100. Let's check our reverse lookup zone. Okay, it didn't show up. So what you can just do is go back here and right click properties, update PTR records, okay. Uh, press F5 to refresh and there it goes, shows up. So going back to our client machine here, let's say we, I don't know, we want to set it back to a static IP. So you go here, properties. Okay, and let's go back to our server. Go here. And as you can see, our um, DNS server, our DNS server automatically updates the entry from dot one hundred to dot ten. And let's check our reverse lookup. Okay, we need to refresh it. And sure enough, it changes the changes from dot one hundred to dot ten. It's working. Everything is working as no usual. Okay, so now I want to talk about GPOs or the policies objects. The purpose of a GPO is to really tell users what they can do, how they can do it, at what time can they do it, etc. etc. So in order to this, let's I'll just close this off in the meantime. Let's go on features, group policy management, testlab.com, and just open our domain. Okay, and you see here group policies object. Here are some of the default policies. Okay, let's say I want to create a policy which will um remove the remove the ability for users to change their desktop wallpaper. So what I can do is right click, create a new group policy object, and let's call it some um, remove wallpaper. Click here. So I do I go to the policy and I want to edit it. It'll be policies, administrative and control panel, display. No, it's not in desktop too. Right, it is right here. So it says prevent change in wallpaper. And of course the default is not configured. Not configured. So we can do right click properties and we want to enable it. Click on apply and OK. Okay, so we edited our GPO, remove paper, wallpaper now. So, and we can always link this GPO to our um, domain. Okay. So now, all the users, which is um, under, all, well, I shouldn't say just all the users, all the objects that is under this domain will have this group policy enforced on all of them, right? So now, to test this, let's try going on to one of our users. Okay, right click, personalize. And as you can see, I can still access it. It is because this user is currently logged in. So you need to do some called a um, GPD update, which I'll show you guys here. You can go start, GP update. Now you can do this from the server side too, but um, I'll just do it here just to show you guys. So you want to update this policy. Okay, the update has been finished. I'll just right click, personalize, and as you can see, I'm no longer seeing an option to change my desktop background. Okay, good. Let's go back to our server. Now, I need to, um, before I wrap up this video, I need to talk about something, and that is really um, the scope of management. Basically, the scope of management refers to the scope of objects, that is like the users, the um, groups, the computers that are going to be affected by a GPO that we are going to create. Let me show you guys something. As you can see here, the user I was working with was Bob Frisky, but I also made an organizational unit. And in case you guys are wondering what, what is an organizational unit, it is basically Active Directory containers into which you can place users, groups, computers, and other organization units. I logged in as this, as Bob Frisky earlier, but I also created Graphics Student and I made a user called Graphics Student, right? So I want to just show you guys that if I place a policy in the, do in the domain level, that means everyone's going to get affected. So 
if I go back to my um, client machine, I log off. I log back in. Log back in as our next user, as the graphics student, that is. Um, his username is gstudent. Okay, I'm logged in. And as you can see, I cannot um, change the desktop background. Because as I said earlier, if I place a policy at the domain level, everyone in the domain is going to be affected. But however, this can be overrided if I place um, another policy inside a um, organizational unit. So this allow wallpaper, if I place this in graphics students, okay, so everyone in the graphics students OU is going to be affected by whatever policy I place in it. And if this policy conflicts with the one in the domain level, it is just going to override it. So now if we go back on our um, client machine, and we run oh, GP update force. And again, you can do this from the server. You do not need to do this, do this um, from the client itself. But I'm just showing you guys. Okay, let me just close this up. The update has finished, so let's go and personalize. And sure enough, the desktop background has come back. So now if we go back to the server, we can now see that the OUs is going to override whatever it is in the domain, at the domain level. Now if I create another OU within this graphics student OU and I place another um, policy inside there, it is going to override whatever, whatever it is in the graphics student OU. Okay, but um, one thing to note is that um, before the domain itself, there's something called the sites, which is like, let's say, I don't know, like we have an enterprise which have locations in Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada. So let's say the sites, let's say he creates a Grenada site and then um, we place something in the sites. It is going to affect all the domain controllers in that site. So let's say instead of testlab.com, I probably had testlab1, testlab2, like let's say I have three domains and I place some policies in the sites and all these domains are part of the sites then all of these domains will be affected. And then lower the, lower the level in terms of lower the hierarchy, domain will, domains will come next. And as I said earlier that if you place remove wallpaper here, this policy here is going to, is going to affect all the um, users below, all the users as part of the domain. And again, below the um, domain is the organizational unit, which is the OU. So if, if I say remove wallpaper at the domain level and I place allow wallpaper in the domain level, it is going to ignore whatever it is in the domain level and just apply the ones in the OU itself. And of course, the ones below the OU will be sub OUs. So like right now, I have allow wallpapers on the graphics student OU. Let's say I create another OU and you can do this in, by the um, new organizational unit. You can just click on that. I click on new OU and I probably want to remove them. Like let's say there's probably a subdivision of graphic students that I do not want them to change any wallpapers. So I probably want to create our next OU and add these students in that OU and then add, put back any remove wallpaper policy. So what you're going what you're gonna find happening is everyone in the domain is going to be affected by the remove wallpaper. But however, because I am um, place allow wallpaper policy inside the graphics students OU, these graphics, all the users inside this graphics students OU will not be affected because there's effectively this policy has overrided the one set at the domain level, the allow paper. Okay, and basically that is it. Thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed it.